I hope you guys appreciate my Halloween appropriate attire. Obviously I couldn't resist. I freaking love Halloween. It's like Christmas to me. Hey guys and welcome to another brand new video. Today's video is my Halloween K-drama recommendations. I have picked a selection of Halloween appropriate K-dramas for you to potentially watch this month. I mean you don't have to watch them this month but if you want to get in the mood for Halloween these are perfect for it. There is a mix of the creepy and the not so creepy so there should be something for everyone. I will be reviewing every single one of the dramas on this list so keep an eye out for them on my channel. First up is Witches Love. In plain sight and soul three generations of witches have been living under the radar running a soup rice restaurant. Everything's great aside from Cho Hong's shady gold digging boyfriend until their new building landlord Sung Tae shows up to make life incredibly difficult for them because you know he suddenly wants things like a deposit and rent. Sung Tae is trying to figure out what happened to him 25 years ago when he was kidnapped as a child. He has very vague memories of what happened a rainy night, a certain house and a knife. That certain house happens to be the soup rice restaurant hence why he buys it and decides to move in so he can investigate properly. Witch's Love has a few different plot points. Obviously it has the romance between Cho Hong and Sung Tae, but we also have Sung Tae trying to figure out what happened to him 25 years ago and we have Cho Hong wrestling with her powers and her need to, you know, get them back after a little incident happens. Witch's Love is a very cute, very fun drama. It is very light hearted. It's mildly creepy in the flashbacks, but nothing that means you need to like hide under the covers or anything. On the scary scale, I would put it at a one. Next up is Oh My Ghostess. Bong Son is painfully shy. She's very timid and introverted and she works as an assistant chef at the Sun restaurant. Thanks to her grandmother's shaman blood, she can see ghosts, which is not a skill she particularly enjoys having. She also has a crush on the star chef who owns the restaurant, Sun Woo, but she is too timid to act on it. Then we have Sune, who is our ghost. She died without ever having experienced any romance in her short life, so she thinks that in order to move on happily to the afterlife, she needs to lose her virginity. So she goes about possessing people and trying to seduce as many men as possible to make that happen. When Sune happens to meet Bongson, she finds the perfect vessel to carry out her mission. There's plenty of drama in this. There are plenty of cute romance moments. There is an interesting twist on the romance because obviously the ghost is possessing her at some points, so it provides a more interesting obstacle than the usual. There is also a bit of a murder mystery as we have to figure out what happened to Sune. Plus there are some super creepy moments and I did jump more than once, possibly because I was watching it at like two o'clock in the morning in the dark. But I would give this a scary rating of at least two, maybe three, purely because some of the ghosts literally just appear out of nowhere and it's a bit like, Ugh, give me a warning. Why don't you? Next up is Let's Fight Ghost or Bring It On Ghost. I've seen it written both ways. Our main character Bong Pao has grown up with the ability to see ghosts. He uses this power to work as an exorcist, banishing ghosts to make money so that he can eventually have a procedure done to remove his ability to see ghosts. At a haunted high school, he meets Hyunji, who is a wandering spirit who died in a traffic accident. She has no memories of how she died, who her parents were. She literally has no memories of anything to do with her pre-death life and she thinks Bong Pao holds the secret to uncovering why she became a spirit after a little incident happens and she suddenly has a memory spring up. So in order to be freed from endlessly wandering and to be able to ascend to the next life, she convinces Bong Pao, more like she basically follows him around and won't leave him alone, to let her move in with him and they become ghost fighting partners. But both are unaware that they are being stalked by an evil spirit who was the cause of her accident and is the reason he can see ghosts. This kind of has a little bit of a supernatural feel because there's a different ghost each episode. It is definitely like a three or a four on the scary slash creepy scale. The ghosts are kind of split between the nice normal looking ones and then the completely terrifying ones that make you jump. There are some disturbing and creepy moments throughout. There's a lot of mystery as well as the romance and this one is a lot of fun and it is also quite lighthearted along with the creepiness. Next up is Scholar Who Walks the Night. This one is set in an alternate Joseon dynasty. Jo Yang Son is the daughter of a nobleman and her family loses everything when her father is framed for treason. So in order to make money and make a living, she dresses up as a man so she can sell books. She then meets Kim Song Yol, who is a classical scholar but also happens to, you know, be a vampire. He's also played by Lee Jung-gi. Yes! 
he just so happens to be tasked with hunting down any vampire that has broken the rules and he is still mourning the loss of his first love. This one isn't particularly scary, it's a nice mix of romance, there's some action, there is some mystery. I liked how it was shot. The costumes are pretty too. Next up is Orang and the Magistrate. Yes, this is another Lee Jungi drama. He appears to do a lot of, you know, historical Halloween-y stuff. Let's just ignore this and move on. In Orang and the Magistrate, a young woman is murdered during the Chosen Dynasty under mysterious circumstances. The spirit of the young woman, Yoon Arang, comes back as a ghost in order to find out what happened to her. Luckily for her, she finds the means to do so when she meets young scholar Lee Eun Oh. He has the ability to communicate with the dead, but he is on a quest of his own. He is searching for his missing mother. She basically pleads with him to get him to help her find her killer, and in order to get her to, you know, go away and leave him alone, he agrees and they team up to hunt down her murderer. Why is it that a lot of these Halloween dramas are historical? Not entirely sure. This is another ghost one and it's another Lee Jungi one. I'm really liking the ghost dramas. They're done really interestingly. They have some really interesting lore and I find them a nice refreshing difference from the western ones not that we have many ghosts in the western one because supernatural kind of started having some ghosts and then it kind of gave up and started doing the demon thing and now i don't even know what's happening in it anymore but anyway next up is mirror of the witch yes another historical drama queen shim can't conceive so she visits the shaman hongju hongju's powerful black magic helps the queen give birth to twins a boy and a girl but that dark sorcery comes at a cost when sori is cursed causing the queen to abandon her and leave her for dead. Charming. Luckily, she is rescued by the father of Poonyong and he becomes her only friend as she's growing up. And you know, obviously she grows up in hiding because she's supposed to be dead. With he and her helper Hyunso at her side, she grows up as a witch, all the while trying to figure out the curse on her life. This one is another of the more popular K-dramas. I feel like it's definitely Halloween appropriate. There is dark sorcery, there is a curse, there is witches, and there is a nice mix of elements throughout this series. Next up is Lovely Horribly. This one is on Vicky and as far as I'm aware, Vicky only. Um, this is the one that I haven't watched yet because it hasn't finished airing and I was like, I'm gonna binge it and then have to wait forever for the final two episodes. But the final two episodes are out this week so I'm gonna be watching it soon. We have Yu Philip who is a top star and we have Ji Il Soon who is a drama story writer. Both of them were born on the same day at the same time. Because of this, they share a zero-sum fate, which basically means if one of them becomes happy, the other one becomes unfortunate and vice versa. Their relationship is all about coincidence, fate, horror, and romance. And of course, we have the question of how will they handle their shared fate? Because of course, like everyone else, they just want to be happy, but that seems like an impossible thing. I know it doesn't sound it from the synopsis, but it is a horror slash supernatural drama. I feel like this one's gonna be on the creepier scale, but this is the one that I haven't watched yet, but I have been reliably informed that it is really, really good, and I was planning on watching it to review for you guys a few weeks ago, but at the time I was going to watch it, we still had about six episodes left to go up on Vicky and I didn't want to like binge watch it and then be waiting weeks because I'm impatient. I can't do it. This one to me sounds like something a little bit different from the other Halloween ones on this list. I do believe that our female lead can see ghosts from what I have understood. Honestly, I feel like this one's gonna freak me out a little bit because my friend Ali and I are born on the exact same day and it's probably just as well we were not born at the exact same time. I hope you guys enjoyed my Halloween K-drama recommendations. I hope you found something to watch. Let me know down below which of these you are planning to watch or if you've already watched them, let me know your thoughts. Also feel free to let me know any other Halloween K-dramas that I have not included in this list. I will link all of my social media down below so you can come and have a chat with me on Twitter, I will also link all of the reviews to all of the K-dramas in this list down below so you can check them out and see what I thought more in depth. And I will see you guys next video. 